I'm Natasha. And I'm Jacques. I'm Sean. And I'm Gideon. Catherine Newton. Alex Fitzallen. We're gonna tell you everything that happened in season one of our show, The Society. The Society season one starts out in a small, quiet New England town full of rich people. So you know something bad's about to happen. Right off the bat, we meet the real main antagonist of the show, the smell, which is exactly what it sounds like. <sighs> Two teens, Kelly and Harry, are innocently making out like they've never seen a horror movie before. They are reprimanded by their classmate, Cassandra, who Harry clearly does not like. Student body president isn't enough for you, now you're hall monitor too, Cassandra. Cassandra and Harry are in a school play performing a bit of the foreshadowing in the form of everyone's favorite AP English read, W.S. Gilbert's Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. Not a flicker of doubt. Back to the story. Harry and Kelly catch Harry's mom arguing with a creepy guy at her office, but Harry's mom brushes it off because she's rushing to get to a meeting with the rest of the town's government where they they are all concerned about the darn smell. Because it's stinky. There's no reason to suspect that this stink poses any health hazard. Quick rundown of our characters. Cassandra, my sister, the golden child of the school and her family. Harry, a popular, unbelievably handsome rich kid who hates Cassandra. Kelly is Harry's girlfriend who has the most badass character arc of the season where she goes from like a mousy girlfriend of the rich hot kid to a strong as fuck. Let me teach myself how to deliver a baby empowered female. <laughs> Ali, very minor character. Cassandra's <laughs> younger sister who can't keep up with her older sis and is in love with her BFF, Will. Will, who has a bad home life and maybe <laughs> likes Kelly. We also briefly meet Grizz, the poetic jock that you can immediately tell has layers to him. Sam is deaf, student who has a very mean brother, Campbell. Sam's best friend is Becca. She's sassy and we are here for it. Helena, hello, is the moral compass of the class and loves Jesus almost as much as she loves her boyfriend, Luke. And guns. There's also the standoffish Elle who Campbell has taken a liking to and it's uncomfortable. It's pretty awkward. Why did you pick me? All teens, 16 and up, are going on a class trip to the Smoky Mountains, which again, sounds like the Started a horror movie, but no one seems worried about it. While being bussed up to the Smokies, every single teen on the bus falls asleep. And when they wake up, all the adults and kids under the age of 16 are missing. Their cell phones don't have data. All text messages are green. And there's no internet. Well, the kids do what the kids do best. Party! <laughs> School's out forever, bitch, right? Wrong. <laughs> Things take a turn when they try to leave town only to find out every way out is now surrounded by dense forest. But hey, what's more fun than thinking about existential dread? Deadly snake bites, looting, fighting, partying. You know, everyday anarchy sounds pretty good until someone dies, and someone definitely does. Well, now that the shit's hit the fan, the group quickly realizes they need to learn how to live and somehow create order amongst a bunch of hormonal teens. Cassandra steps up to the task. Do you want chaos? Fucking shoot me. Unfortunately, the jocks don't see it that way, but Cassandra, being the smart badass she is, convinces their girlfriends to be on her side, and those boys aren't gonna get what they want unless the girls get what they want. There's no I in team, right? Sam and Campbell find out that some of the parents in town, including theirs and Cassandra's and Allie's, were involved in some failed deal to remove the smell. Campbell threatens Sam to be quiet about it because the lack of communication definitely does not lead to conflict whatsoever. All the while, Cassandra literally is building a new society, get it? From the ground up by rationing food, taking the inventory of resources, setting up a police force in the form of jocks known as the guard, and deciding everyone is going to share houses, something the rich kids aren't happy about. To keep spirits up, they decided to have prom! <laughs> Now, usually at prom, someone gains telekinetic abilities and murders everyone, but at this prom, only one person dies. It's Cassandra by way of a mysterious gunslinger. Becca announces she's pregnant. Don't even think about asking her who the daddy is. Things quickly fall back into anarchy with even more people getting gun happy. Drop the gun! I'm serious! Put your gun down! Campbell gets even weirder with Elle. <laughs> Allie becomes the de facto leader, effectively ruining her life. I'm taking over the responsibility of keeping us all safe. Did you think it was just going to be a fun teen romp instead of a metaphor for socialism that also exposes the dark parts of humanity. So sorry. Fucking no. Ali's first order of business, ban all guns, confiscating all guns. Which truly works in TV shows and reality. Australia will tell you that. Everyone teams up to search for Cassandra's killer and Sam confesses that Campbell is a psychopath. I just know she's the mind game. The Ali squad gets word from suspect number two. Harry is now hooked on drugs thanks to Campbell. That some kid named Dewey shot Cassandra. Dewey's also a cuckoo misogynist, but Ali still decides to have a trial. Remember mock court in school? This is just like that, except your classmates can sentence you to death. Dewey is found guilty but says that Harry gave him the idea and Campbell helped him do it. Campbell is arrested and Allie has to decide if she can sentence her cousin to death who literally maybe killed a dog and tried to drown his girlfriend. 
Allie lets Campbell go, which can't be good. It's not. It's not good. Allie and two of the guards shoot Dewey in a gun roulette so that no one has to feel guilty about being the one to shoot him. Whew. I just, I can't. Thanks to Allie, things are going really well, which means things are about to get fucked. Helena and Luke decide to get married. Grace comes out of the closet to Sam. And we're introduced to the cutest, most innocent couple that must be protected at all costs. <laughs> Terry is deeply depressed and still hooked on drugs, thanks to Campbell. I don't care. They deduce that they're in some sort of parallel universe or alternate dimension. This Earth isn't our own. Did we mention this show is sci-fi? Elle accidentally poisons half of the town on Thanksgiving with a pumpkin pie when she was just trying to kill Campbell. She's just trying to kill Campbell. Just normal teen stuff. Like Nothing's it. wrong. <laughs> Allie decides to hold a mayoral election as an act of good faith. But of course, that little scamp Campbell has something up his sleeve by nominating Cassandra's main rival, Harry. While all this is happening, Grizz and a search party discover new farmable land through the woods. Might actually be able to survive. Becca has her baby and she names it Eden. Get it? Things are looking up, right? The election does not go as expected with Allie and her entire group is beaten, arrested, and the future of Newham totally uncertain. These are people who betrayed us. And hold on to your butts for the cliffhanger that will make you rip your hair out. The last shot is of a sign with the names of the residents of Newham hanging as their parents read Peter Pan to younger kids of West Ham. What? What? Weird. And now you're all up to speed. Thanks for watching.